Previously, uh, I talked about some of the other sensors, the uh, reed switch to work out whether the garage door is open, the relay that I'm going to use to turn the uh, uh, garage door open or on and off. And now what I wanted to do was to look at the sonar sensor. And so if I take the sonar sensor out here, you can see the, the sensor. It's uh, a Maxbotics MB1040. Uh, they come without headers. I bought a set of headers and just uh, soldered those in. Uh, this is a uh, sensor provides three different ways that you can uh, read the data. You can get it as an analog voltage and that's about 9.8 millivolts per inch and then you can read that in using uh, an analog read uh, on the Arduino if I went into one of the on the Galileo sorry if I went into one of the uh, analog ports I could read that data in and then it would uh, uh, tell me uh, the voltage and then I could uh, do the math on it alternatively I could uh, read a pulse width uh, now that pulse width will change based on whether or not uh, there's an object in front and it's about 167 microseconds I think from uh, memory reading off the data sheet. The final thing that it will do is actually give me uh, serial data and so when I uh, go and ask for serial data on the device it will send me a set of characters. So let's have a look at those uh, different ways of uh, getting that data. So let me just uh, uh, drop this in here and I'm just going to plug that in, let's hook up uh, the ground and the 5 volt power. Oh, make sure the 5 volt power actually goes into its uh, uh, socket. And so I have my multimeter hooked up. And if I bring that into shot here, you can see that the multimeter is reading a value. And if I put my hand in front of the sensor, it gives me uh, a different value. Now, that's actually reading uh, uh, 9.8 millivolts per inch. And I'm just reading the distance from the board here to my sensor. So if I actually just uh, go and measure the distance... you'll see that uh, uh, I'm reading about 62 uh, inches uh, from the base of the device to the, to the ceiling. Let's try that again. And so the sensor will read somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, now, what it can also give me is it can give me a pulse width. And I have the pulse uh, with value coming out of here uh, connected into my oscilloscope. So let's uh, jump over to the PC and I can bring up the oscilloscope software and uh, here you can see I have a pulse width uh, that I've already gathered. I could uh, refresh that and I have a larger pulse width and in fact if I open up the uh, virtual panel and I zoom in on it you can see the pulse width change as I move my hand in front and back again. Now I could hook that into uh, my Galileo, I could use pulse in, read that, do the math on it. The alternative is, is that I could actually get a set of serial data uh, out of the device. And uh, here I have uh, a waveform, you can see the uh, serial data uh, coming in and I can read that data. So what I want to do is now just hook up my scope uh, to the serial data. So I'm going to take uh, my probe value here and I'm going to move it over to my serial out. And if we go back and have a look at my virtual panel, let's open that again. Let's zoom the display. You can see that I've got uh, some serial data coming in uh, quite nicely. Now, I want to turn channel 2 on. And the reason I want to do this is that the sensor outputs the serial data uh, in inverted um, 
uh, serial, inverted TTL, which I can't read directly into uh, the Galileo. So what I had to do was just to build a little TTL inverter that would take that uh, uh, information and then uh, invert it. So let's turn channel two on, and you can see that uh, uh, I've got uh, a signal that's uh, inverted, and now I'm getting data in from uh, the sensor, and I'm getting it in a format that my Galileo can read. So let's actually just shut it down, and I'll show you the actual data itself. I have a little uh, Sailor Logic uh, connected to it, and here you can see the serial sensor. This is the, se the, the stream that's coming in from the sensor directly. I can go into my... Um, uh, uh, logic analyzer and I can tell it that I want it to deal with the inverted uh, values. I can't do that on the Galileo. So what I had to do was to do that inversion and you can see in here that this is actually just reading it as standard uh, 9600 board data. And so if I go and capture a bunch of data there, you'll see that I'm getting an R and then I get my three characters, 0, 52, 5, 2 and a carriage return. And if I look at this what you can see is I'm getting a bunch of signal readings because I have this set up to continually range. That's usually the uh, easiest way to do things. But you can also control uh, the ranging of this through uh, the pins. Uh, I think you can take Rx low and raise it up for about 20 microseconds and it will then go and do a ranging and send you the serial data. Uh, the fastest time that you can actually go and, uh, uh, and do this is about once every uh, 49 milliseconds. So I have that data now and if we look at the circuit you can see that uh, I'm reading the data from the inverter and I'm going into the hardware serial port uh, uh, on the Galileo and I'm using that as pin zero. So how I'm reading it is if we go back here to Visual Studio you can see that I'm setting up uh, a serial call and then I'm just in the loop going, and if there is data available, I'm going to read it. I'm going to log that to the screen. So I can run this, and we'll deploy to the device. And here you can see that now I've got uh, serial data coming in, and if I put my hand in the way of that, you can see that I'm getting uh, serial data measuring inches from the sensor to my hand. This is uh, using the, the onboard UART in the Galileo. I could also do this via a thing called a serial event. And here you can see that I have uh, an ifdef. And serial event is uh, something that you can tell uh, the wiring that I'm going to have serial data being available. And then once every loop, if there is data present, it will call the, the serial event. So how I actually make that work is I create my own uh, void serial event uh, method and then I tell the preprocessor for C++ that I want to put in I'm going to predefine serial event and when I click on that what you'll see is my if defs will re-render now what I'm going to do is come into serial event uh, I'm going to check if data is, while ever data is available, I'm going to read it and log it. Now, in this particular case, because I'm having data every 49 milliseconds, as I read it in, there's always going to be data into the device. So the loop will come once, go into serial event and stay there. Clearly, it, what you would be better off doing in the case of the, the serial event is actually doing a triggered reading, and then you could just simply get all of the serial data and then perform some other function. So... If I run this, what you'll see is now, same thing, I'm reading that data in, and if I put my hand in front of it, you can see that I'm reading a different distance, and I can move that around. I don't yet know what I'll actually use um, in my garage door project to work out where my wife is parking the car, uh, whether I'll use just the, the easy voltage and do that read, uh, or whether I'll use uh, serial data. I'll probably not use the pulse width. And uh, the reason you know, behind that is that the, the pulse width just seems to be a little bit sensitive to when it starts uh, the pulse read. And so you have to align the delays when you bring it up, uh, when you bring the TX 
uh, the RX uh, pin up high to start a read, you have to delay enough time to be able to then do the pulse uh, read and get the actual pulse off it uh, appropriately. In the, the next set, we'll start looking at taking some of this data and then presenting it through uh, the LCD that I have here uh, because I want to be able to read when my wife pulls in and we can set the distance for the car, but I'll need to actually, I want to actually see what that distance uh, is.